Hello YouTube and welcome to Roblox Basics. Now, before I even get started, uh, this is what it should look like the second you load up Roblox Studio. I will go over that in a second, but if you're on this video, or found, found this video, and you don't know what Roblox or Roblox or whatever you call it is, I would recommend not watching this video and going and playing it instead. I'll put a little annotation uh, as to the website because otherwise this will make absolutely no sense at all for you and just look like Lego. So for those not so regular with it, it is basically online Lego. It's incredibly fun, you can create your own place and the community is both amazing and terrible depending on who you make friends with and stuff. So for those who are Robloxians, let's go. The very first thing you should, see, you should see when you load up is this grey base plates, little toolbars up here and place one you should you might not have all of these in which case just enable pretty much every single one except these ones of course I don't have these, what are you talking about? not at all <laughs> no we didn't see anything okay those are basically little mods, ignore the one called exploit, that was just me messing around seeing if I could make the exploit Unfortunately, or rather fortunately, I couldn't. So, I did not get banned or anything, do not worry. And the only times I've been banned are for uh, bad adverts. So, all the settings should be as following, except maybe this might be, that might be yellow and lit, in which case you'll want to pause it. As you can see, I'll pause it and then rewind just to show you. So, the very first thing before you even do anything, is you want to go into View and turn on Explorer and properties. Now if you haven't already got these positioned in this way you'll want Explorer here and properties here below it. What this does is basically the Explorer allows you to choose and edit blocks and when you click on one it comes up with the properties of the block or item for you to then edit. So for example if I want to make the base plate green I just select green and there you go. So in this first episode I'm going to cover the, ba the very, very, very basics of it. Basically, hold mouse and move around your camera, the same as you probably would if you're a spectator in a game. Uh, w to zoom in and it gets faster the longer you hold it. And WASD to move around left, right, up and down do exactly the same things. I just use WASD because I'm used to it. All the other keys like space and that do nothing as far as I know or I've never needed to use them. A few other basic tools you'll need. Um, the this here, right here, is insert objects from web. If you select that, you can then pick your toolbox and go into search to insert free models. For example, if I want a chain gun, I'm just gonna search for a chain gun. There you go. I can take any of these and click on it, and it will put it straight into my place. And it, I can choose to put it in the starter pack. I'll go over what that is later. But for now, there you go. I just put a chain gun in. So with the basics, you would you won't be able to select this base plate at first. You will be able to select any models, and it'll look like that. So you can then delete them. Uh, since that's just a basic example, first thing um, I will show you is what all of these are. The workspace is basically everything you see, and if you turn it invisible, things you can't see. Basically, it's the camera, the terrain, and any blocks or scripts or models you choose to put in. The players we won't fiddle with that at all in single player or testing mode or building mode for example since that's basically what manages the players you'll only need to cover that in scripting which I won't cover during the basic tutorial lighting is a place where you can store object it, it's not its actual use is to determine the lighting and uh, time of day for example so I'm just going to set the time of day to midnight and there you go now it's midnight so the original settings 14 2 o'clock in the afternoon all the rest of it you can change the ambient so I could make the whole thing yellow so now every block or anything I do will be yellow but you really kind of don't want to do that so I'm just going to set it back to its base value of around that it's 170 ish from what I remember um, start uh, basically if you want to get a model and get it so that a script will insert it later, for example in a tycoon, you can put the model in the lighting, it will be invisible, 
and it won't interact with the actual player when they spawn, but it will still be in the game, so you can still edit it and stuff. Starter GUI, or Starter GUI, is for the these things here. These are ones I have built in built into my studio. Like um, the one over here, which comes up with a giant GUI. The one over here, which comes up with little scripts you can execute. Um, those are GUI, game user interface or something. And that's where you put all the uh, GUIs that you want your player to start with. The starter pack is where you put all tools or weapons or items you want your player to start with. So those only use for those. Debris, I have never bothered with this. I really, it's just basically how many debris blocks are allowed. And soundscape, I've never bothered with this either. There probably is something to do with these when you get deep into making a place and add specific music and ambience and that. But for the basics, we really won't need to cover that. The other basic tools you'll need are up here. We've gone over the pause, uh, play and rewind. There's also these toolbars here, which are the most important of all, as well as these. So, for now, I'm just going to unlock this. I'll talk about locking blocks later. But now I can select it, as you can see by the little rim. It glows. And once you've selected it, these this is a drag button, so I can drag it around, as you can see. This is a move button, so I can move it along its hinges without actually changing the size of it. And this is the resize button, which means I can resize it, which makes a nice little noise, which interrupts me, to any size I want along a certain scale. And the rotate button, as you could guess, rotates it. I'll go over rotating much de later detail in around episode 4. And the simple other tools which you can discover yourself, such as the paint tool, so you can paint the whatever you colour you like. I just generally stick with green since it's like, oh, that's too green. It's grass coloured. Uh, this is colour picker, so you can pick a colour. It's the same as in paint or anything. This selects the texture. So right now it's on sort of Lego blocks, in case you hadn't noticed and you've got plenty of textures like woods and corro uh, sorry I forgot what that is, diamond plate concrete, corroded metal, grass more suitable to be honest this selects the indents which that's more to do with welding and that and I'll go over that in later detail some other time motor, hinge and terrain I'll go over terrain in a later one as well so that's all the basics you'll really want to know everything else here um, I don't use any of those except these, which are the Explorer and Properties windows. That's a little shortcut there, actually. Um, but that's pretty much all you'll need to know for now to get yourself started in your editor and the basic tools that you'll use and what each of these does. The Properties simply comes up with the stuff that you can edit, so I can change the base plate size over here, which I'll go over in the next episode. Thanks for watching and continue on.